So what is interferometry? Well, interferometry is the practice of using a two or more element radio telescope array to observe astronomical sources. This array itself, along with the electronics used to synthesize the signals, is what we call the interferometer. But first, why have an interferometer at all? Well, for a, for a single telescope, its resolution can be approximated as uh, the resolution can be approximated as the wavelength of the source we're trying to observe over the diameter of the telescope. So um, this means that for any given wavelength, if we want better resolution, we need to build telescopes with larger and larger diameters. But building uh, large uh, diameter telescopes is difficult and expensive. And uh, actually, lucky for us, it turns out that for an array of telescopes, like an interferometer, uh, this uh, resolution equation modifies to lambda over b, where b is the largest separation between any two telescopes, and the separation acts as the effective diameter of the array. So along with being more cost-effective and practical to build, an array of telescopes also gives us separate control over the collecting area and resolution of a telescope. So um, let's go ahead and draw what an interferometer looks like. Uh, first, we have two antennas, which we will call antenna uh, I and J. And these two ante antennas are separated by a certain distance, uh, which we will call the baseline B. They both point toward a source in the sky in the direction of the unit vector S. So let's draw the source and the unit vector s and they will both receive a signal from this source so like so um, however because the antennas are separated by the distance b they will not receive the signals at the same time because astronomical sources are far away, the signals received by the telescopes are plane waves. So we're going to have plane waves coming through the sky and hitting the telescopes. Um, we can see from the figure that one of the antennas, antenna I, is just a tad bit closer to the source than the other. And it is this antenna which will receive the signals first. So the time difference in which the second antenna, antenna J, uh, receives the same wave as the first, so for example, let's say this one, um, is called the geometric delay, and which we will refer to as tau. Um, since we know the velocity that the plane waves are traveling at, which is just the speed of light, C, in order to calculate the geometric delay, we need to know the extra distance that the wave had to travel in order to reach the second antenna. So we need to know this distance here. And this distance is just the baseline vector B oops, um, dotted with the unit vector S. So this is B, this distance is B dot S. And knowing this distance, like I said, we just divide by the velocity of the plane waves. So um, the distance is b dot s divided by the velocity of the plane waves gives us the uh, time delay. So tau is equal to b dot s over c. And now we know the time that it took this wave, the extra time that it took this wave to reach uh, this second antenna. Now suppose there's a second source in the sky, let's call it um, source 2. So this is 2, this is 1. Uh, this directional unit vector corresponds to the first source and so will this time delay. Um, so the second source will also cause a geometric delay between the antennas. But it will be different from that caused by the first source because the directional unit vector s will be pointing in a different direction. So this will be shining radiation onto the two telescopes and it will be at a slightly different direction, s vector 2.
So we will have a tau 2 will be over C. So um, now both the antennas are receiving signals from both sources. Um, and antenna I will receive signals from both sources at time T, so this antenna here. And antenna J will receive the signals from both sources at times T minus tau 1 and T minus tau 2. The antennas themselves can't distinguish between the signals from each source as what they are detecting is a combined voltage from both sources. Um, we can define, uh, we can actually define this total voltage per antenna though um, as E of 1 at T plus E2 at T is equal to E I at time t. So basically for antenna i, uh, where e1 and e2 are the signals from source 1 and source 2 at time t. And then for antenna j, we have signal from source 1 at t minus tau 1 plus the source signal from source 2 at T minus tau 2 is equal to the total signal received by antenna J at time T. Okay, so if we want to find out information about only one source, we need to correlate the signals from each telescope with each other. And so we run these signals through a correlator which multiplies and integrates the voltages received by the antennas. So using the correlation equation um, F correlated with G at tau is equal to the integral of F at T times T minus minus tau dt. Um, and if we just define our total uh, signal per antenna, ei at t as equal to f, which we defined earlier as, as equal to um, e1 at t plus e2 at t, and then ej at t is equal to g at e1 t minus tau 1 plus e2 at t minus tau 2 and we plug them into the equation um, let's see what we get so f correlated with g at tau is equal to f of t which is this top one right here is equal to e1 t plus e2 t times uh, times e1 at t minus tau 1 minus tau can't forget this tau right here minus tau plus e2 at t minus tau 2 minus tau dt so normally this would be like a complex conjugate, but because we are in the real time value domain, it doesn't really matter. And what we're gonna do now is expand um, the integral so that we have, okay. So because E1 and E2, the signals from the different sources are different and independent from each other, they integrate away by averaging to zero as random noise in this term right here. So these two will just integrate to zero and this term right there. We are then left with the integral of E1 at T times E1 at T minus tau 1 minus T plus E2 
uh, at t times e2 at t minus tau 2 minus t dt. Now, in order for these terms to provide meaningful signal information, they must not average to zero as well. Um, and this is possible when either uh, when tau is equal to either negative tau 1 or uh, negative tau 2. So let's see, tau is equal either to negative tau 1 or tau is equal to negative tau 2. So let's choose tau 1. So then the integral would become is equal to the integral of e1 at t times e1 at t since these cancel each other out and that's equal to e1 squared. So the end result is the average power received by the antennas for either source 1 or source 2 depending on the geometric delay. In this case uh, the geometric delay for the first source um, tau the geometric delay being tau 1. So for a set of taus, we have a set of power values where we have this is equal to tau, this is equal to the power, and let's say we have a negative tau 1, e1 squared, and we had done tau 2, e2 squared, and if we had had like another source, for example, in the middle, it would, you know, be somewhere on this axis, three, and so on and so on, you know, for different time delays. Um, so for a set of tau's, um, we have a set of power values which rise above the signals that could not be correlated, and all the other signals that couldn't be correlated are down here as as noise. So we just showed in a very basic way how an interferometer works. The telescopes collect the astronomical signals and the correlator matches the signal functions from each antenna with each other so that they are maximized to give us a power value. So this correlation gives us a one-dimensional image of the sky in a direction parallel to the baseline of the telescope. So we had the sky and we had our two antennas, um, you know, we would know, we would have information about the sources in this direction. Um, and if we wanted to form a more complete two-dimensional picture, we would need another pair of, of telescopes, for example, you know, forming a baseline perpendicular to uh, the direction of the first, um, and this would give us more information about the sources in this direction. Um, so, but this right here is more advanced interferometry, and this will be covered in another tutorial.